AMT gives us a breakdown of Fidelity FX Super Resolution 2.0 and says that it is going to be available on Xbox. So yesterday, AMD talked about Fidelity FX Super Resolution 2.0, the big upgrade a lot of people have been waiting for over the 1.0 version. Now, Fidelity FX Super Resolution is kind of the rival to NVIDIA's DLSS, which allows images to be upscaled, keeping that great image quality and not sacrificing frame rate. So they have a big article here talking about FSR 2.0, about how it can be used, where it will be available. So let's talk about it. So it says here, FSR 2.0 is our next level temporal upscaling technology with incredible image quality. It has been built by AMD from the ground up to deliver similar or better than native image quality and is designed to help boost frame rates in supported games and is coming in Q2 2022. So we're here, we're in Q2 2022. It's going to start being available for developers to be implementing it into their games and giving us hopefully more stable, more better games in terms of image quality than keeping that frame rate locked at at least 60 frames per second specifically on consoles like the Xbox Series X and S. Now there's no machine learning within this FSR 2.0 and they reiterated this because they had mentioned that in their announcement last week about Fidelity FX Super Resolution 2.0 and they say here when we announced FSR 2.0 technology last week we told you that it does not use machine learning in its upscaling algorithm and therefore doesn't require any kind of dedicated ML hardware in support of products and platforms. So how can they achieve this without machine learning? And they explain it saying Broadly speaking, machine learning is an incredibly useful set of tools and techniques that can aid and accelerate this process. However, the results that ML achieves can sometimes not be the most optimal, lacking the spark of human imagination that can often lead to breakthroughs for complex problems. So, I mean, there you go. I, with anything, you don't have the imagination with any sort of AI, any sort of machine learning. It's just kind of taking the mathematical equations and going with that and basing all of their outputs off of those just numbers, mathematical equations that they've come up with and the models that they have developed. But there isn't, I guess, that extra critical thinking that humans bring to the process. And that is why right now they're able to achieve what they have without the machine learning. So they continue here saying, with the above in mind, we are now placed to understand that while machine learning is one vehicle to solve problems, it is not a prerequisite for achieving good quality image upscaling. Often ML-based real-time temporal upscalers use the model learned solely to decide how to combine previous history samples to generate the upscaled image. There's typically no actual generation of new features from recognizing shapes or objects in the scene. And because of all of this, they say that without using machine learning, it can provide significant advantages over machine learning solutions and they're going to be able to actually implement fidelity fx super resolution to much more platforms because they aren't required to have the machine learning hardware to be able to use this feature all right looking here at the different modes that are going to be available with fsr 2.0 there's actually four modes this here this table only has three of the modes but there's also an ultra performance mode that is available to developers who want to include a mode that is designed to offer the ultimate in performance. But these are the three main ones here, quality, balance, and performance. And the difference between them all is just kind of what their names imply. So quality is going to give better than native image quality with projected significant performance gain. Balance is going to compromise between image quality and projected performance gain. And then performance is going to provide a quality image similar to native image quality with a projective major performance game. And then the scale factors are a bit different here. You have quality at 1.5 times per dimension, 2.25 times area scale, 67% screen resolution, balance 1.7 times per dimension, 2.89 times area scale, 59% screen resolution, and then performance 2.0 times per dimension, four times area scale, 50% screen resolution. And then the other difference will be the input resolutions, where they start from and where they scale to from 720p to 1440p for to quality, 635p, I guess you want to call it, to 1270p for balance, and then 540p to 1080p for performance. But the output resolution for all three of these modes are going to be the same, going from 1080p up to 4k so that's going to be super interesting 
to see how this stuff gets implemented into games and how well it works when we start playing games with the FSR 2.0 modes and seeing the difference between each one, quality, balance, and performance. Like if you're able to get a quality 1440p output or 4K output with the quality mode and keep high resolution 60 frames per second on console, that's going to be very, very beneficial. Now, they'll probably have to go with more of a balance or performance depending on what the game is, but just having the ability to have those output resolutions scale from 1080 to 4K and keeping good frame rates is going to be something that's going to help with the overall performance and just enjoyability of a game when you're playing it. Now, down here, they go over some screenshots and it's going to be hard to tell from my video, but if you go to the link in the description below, you can see the difference between the different modes. I mean, you look at them, it's really hard to see from the eye, like just looking at it with your eyes, it's hard to tell the difference between them. And that's the thing with a lot of this stuff is that when you're just playing a game casually, you may not really notice very much of the actual image quality is jumping from these different modes, but you will notice the frame rates and the frame rates is the most important thing. So something like the FSR 2.0, giving the ability to have a good, a decent, a better image quality than we previously could have had. And then keeping those steady frame rates, specifically 60 frames per second is going to be the key. Now here they talk about how FSR 2.0 is actually integrated into games. And they say, as we announced last week, Fidelity FX Super Resolution 2.0 temporal upscaling uses frame color, depth, and motion vectors in the rendering pipeline and leverages information from past frames to create very high quality upscaled output and it also includes optimized high quality anti-aliasing. So they give you kind of an example of how they get the actual image that you're seeing when you're playing games. You have the three areas of inputs, which would be the render resolution and depth data, the render resolution motion vectors, and the render resolution color data, all going in to the AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution 2.0. It's a very long name, all upscaled, and then we get the actual upscaled anti-aliased output, which is what we will be playing when this technology is implemented. So what's great about this as well is that it's completely open source. So any developers who want to try this out, see if they can use it, are going to be able to. They say just like FSR 1.0 and FSR 2.0 will be open source via the MIT license. It will be available for developers as an intuitive, easy to use API with the source provided via a library that supports DirectX 12 and Vulkan, and there will also be plug-in for Unreal Engine. Now, FSR 2.0 is going to support a broad spectrum of hardware, as they say here, and it's not just going to be for AMD cards, it's also going to be for competitors. So if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, it can also be taking advantage of this FSR 2.0. And here is what they are kind of suggesting the cards depending on what you want to do. So if your target upscaling resolution is 4K, you need at least an RX 6700 XT, RX 5700 or higher. And if you're on the NVIDIA side, RTX 3070 or an RTX 2070 or higher. For 1440p, you can get from for the AMD, the RX 6600, 5600 and the Vega series and above. And then for NVIDIA 3060, 2060 and GTX 1080 and above. And then if you're just targeting 1080p, you can have a card from the 6500 XT, the RX 590 or above, and then from Nvidia side, the GTX 16 series, the GTX 1070 and above. So broad range of graphics cards that can utilize FSR 2.0, which is great to see. And if you're somebody on the lower end here of the graphics cards and lots of games start implementing this into it, I think that's where you're really going to see those benefits of technologies like this that allow you to still get these games with, I mean, the, a good experience at the very least and not have to go out and purchase one of these new graphics cards to be kind of like on the same level in terms of the frame rates and the image quality. Now, obviously the higher graphics cards are gonna have the better outputs, all that type of stuff, but it's just great to see that they're kind of still allowing people with the lower tier cards to utilize FSR 2.0. And finally, they end off the article talking about more game support and FSR 2.0 specifically on Xbox. So. What they revealed here last week was that Deathloop was going to be getting FSR 2.0 and that they're working with Arcane and Bethesda, which is a very good thing because seemingly once this game comes onto Xbox Game Pass this year, 
it's going to have this technology implemented into it and arcane is going to have that knowledge on how to best utilize fsr 2.0 which i would assume they will pass that knowledge on to everybody else at xbox game studio so that they are going to be able to use fsr 2.0 in their games and then they mention here that a playstation 5 console exclusive but also coming out on pc for spoken by Luminous Productions will be the next game that is for sure getting FSR 2.0 when it releases in October 2022. So good news, I mean, they don't say anything about PS5 having this, but I'm assuming PS5 will be able to have this based off of the broad spectrum of hardware. Like they say, that is gonna be able to utilize FSR 2.0. I mean, you look at these PC GPUs, the lower end ones. If they can utilize it, then I'm assuming the PS5 can utilize it, but there is no mention here and that could just be a marketing thing, but it will be very interesting to see going forward throughout this console generation, which games from each platform utilize. If there are games that come out that are multi-platform where FSR 2.0 is utilized for, let's say the Xbox and not for the PlayStation 5. And that could be because FSR 2.0 as they mentioned, is fully supported on Xbox and will be available on the Xbox GDK for registered developers to use for their games. So that could be a big thing if it's just easier to implement, easier to use when developing games for Xbox. Maybe there will be a disparity, but you never know. I'd assume that developers who are third party for sure putting out a game, if they're going to implement it on one system, they're going to want to implement it everywhere else that their game is available that will support FSR 2.0. But that's it for me. Just interesting information about new technologies still being released that are going to be available for developers to be utilized PC, Xbox, and I'm assuming PlayStation 5 as well. And we're almost two years into this generation of consoles and there's still new technology like this that is coming out that is going to make games continuously look and run better and just give us those more stable frame rates. So there's still a lot of growth available within the consoles, the Xbox Series X, the Xbox Series S. So that's it for me, guys. Let me know what your thoughts about this are. And uh, what do you think about FSR 2.0? Are you excited for it for Xbox? Do you think it's going to also come out on PlayStation 5? And how do you think it's going to improve the overall experience for games? If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button. You're new here. You enjoy what you saw. Consider hitting that subscribe button and help this channel grow. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for your support. I'll catch you in the next video.